upon solid ground, a solid rock, and his name is Jesus Christ. And that's why we declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all people, and worship gives us an avenue to do so. Worship. It doesn't matter whether we came in uh, a little bummed out this morning. It doesn't matter whether we had an argument this morning. It doesn't matter where you came in limping this morning, where you got no money in your pocket this morning. But we come with an attitude of gratitude. Thank you, Lord, that I'm going to praise you in the good and the bad, and I'm not going to allow any feeling to dictate how I'm going to worship you this morning. That's the King of Kings we serve. That's the God we declare. We worship Him to all nations, telling Him about the goodness of the Lord. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I know some of you might be hungry this morning, but we're talking about spiritual food. And so this morning, we want to welcome you in behalf of our pastors, Pastor Ruben and Diana Gutran, and also the whole body of Riverside Peacemakers Ministry. We're a, we're a people. We're the biggest little church in all of Riverside. But I'm going to let you know we're big in love, big in heart, big in hope, big in joy. We're big that way. We're a people that truly love people. We love you. We're glad that you're here. We you to you this morning. If you're viewing via Facebook, we welcome you to come join us. Stay with us because how many know that the Lord, God Almighty, wants to speak to our hearts this morning. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We thank you that you're real in our lives. We invite you this morning, right now, to take full control over our thoughts, full control over our heart. Holy Spirit, we allow you to do what you need to do to break anything that is not according to your will, that is not pleasing to you. Break all things, Lord, that we will discover our new identity in Christ this wow. morning. Wow. Father, my God, that we will not resume to the old patterns of our old ways, but that we would walk, God, in the identity, the new name that you've given us this morning. We love you, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a good, good praise offering. He is worthy. And so this morning, I, I wanted to just uh, share. We're going to be talking about uh, Jacob and Esau this morning in Genesis, uh, where, where Jacob wrestles with God. But, you know, I was reflecting because I, I always use my, my grandchildren as, as examples because I can minister by them in a lot of ways. You know, it's a lot of testy times, trying times. Okay. I mean, they're, they're literally, I'm talking about uh, Bernie and, and Ollie. Uh, Stephen's more or less like laid back, cool, calm, collective. But Ernie and Ollie, we usually have them a lot. And they're, they're these two young boys that, I mean, they're literally fireballs. Full of energy. I mean, they will wear you out. They were the up in that pool basket. You're talking about. And so the thing about them is that, man, Grandma is their favorite. I mean, they're, I call them cheap lid, whatever. They, they stuck on ground. But they're, they're boys, and boys, you know, they, they like nothing but, but sweets and sugar. And so I get on them a lot, and I, 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 I don't want to give them sweets and sugar all the time. And, and so because they need uh, uh, solid food in order to grow strong, in order to, you know, grow healthy, in order to, you know, uh, be properly uh, filled with all the nutrition. And so when I either say no or I neglect to give them whatever it is that they want or try to stop them from hurting themselves, I mean, they give me some serious looks. I mean, I mean back in the day, any gang banger would have been pleased to have those looks that these boys could, could show. You know, they, they mad dog me sometimes. And, and, but it's, it's for their own good. And, and the reflection of that, I mean, you know that a, a, a well-balanced diet, a, 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 a nutritious diet, that's the same uh, that the Lord wants to give you and I as the people of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see, because how I many you know that we can stop the Holy Spirit from moving in our lives? My God. How I many you know we can put those roadblocks, those barriers? How I many you know that, that we can reject them? How I many you know that we can just turn from them and, and lock out from them and close our mind to what the Holy Spirit wants to do? Because, you know, uh, as Christians, we not only need 
you know, that spiritual milk, but now we need solid food in order to become that all that God has called us to be. Can somebody say amen? Amen. So a lot of times in serving God, we, we preach about the goodness of God, and rightly so. We amen. should hear about the goodness of God. Yes, but in other times, we also hear about the not-so-goodness okay. of God, when God needs to deal with his people, when God needs to come and, and make some correction, when God wants to wrestle with us in our lives in order for us to get rid of those things, to break disobedience, okay. to break rebellion, to break going on the wrong path, to break everything that will take you away from the calling of God. And so this morning we're going to be opening up in Genesis uh, chapter 32, verse 22. Tell your neighbor, get ready to wrestle this morning. Get ready to wrestle this morning. Genesis chapter 32, verse 22. So the Bible declares, and he arose that night, which is speaking about Jacob. And he took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of Jacob. He took them and sent them over the brook and sent over all that he had. Then the Bible says that Jacob was alone. Tell your neighbor he was alone. Tell your neighbor he sent over all his material goods. So then, after he did all that, the Bible says a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now he saw that he did not prevail against him. The Bible says now, when he, capital H, saw that he did not prevail against little H, him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, he, capital H, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, little H, I will not let you go until you bless me. Capital H, we're speaking about God, okay. God Almighty. Okay. Middle H, we're talking about Jacob. Okay. So he said to him, what is your name? Uh -huh. He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and man. I mean, you know that at times in our walk, we struggle with God. And in reference to man, we struggle with our inner nature. Okay. We struggle with the other side of us, the, okay. the flesh. Yes, he said, and you prevailed. And Jacob asked him, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, capital H, why is it that you ask me about my name? And the Bible says that he blessed him there. So Jacob, in verse 30, called the name the place to now. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Just as he crossed over the now, the sun rose on him, and he lived on his head. Therefore, to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the muscle that shrank, which is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the muscle that shrank. Now, tell your neighbor that God's desire is to get each and every one of us to submit and surrender. Tell your neighbor that. It's time to submit and surrender. See, because God's desire is for us to deepen our relationship with Him. Because I'm going to talk it's all about a relationship with the Father. This is why we're here. We're here not for an audience of, 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 of music or not for entertainment, but we're here for an audience of one, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. This is why we've all come. So tell your neighbor that sometimes he has to break those things that are no good for you and I. See, he doesn't necessarily understand this. God does not necessarily understand the things that you go through. He doesn't necessarily care about the trials that you're facing. He doesn't necessarily care about the problems that we have. He doesn't necessarily necessarily care that you might be a little short on money. Yes, sir. Why? Because all he really cares about is our soul. All he really cares about is that he gets you to align with his will that you're able to cross over into the promised land which is heaven and that we do all that we can to get 
get there. Come on. See, he knows the end already. This is why he don't trip out in our trials. Okay. We trip out in our trials. God says, have faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Have faith in all that you do because I'm going to see you through everything that you go through anyway. So I'm not concerned with the little things that you think that are big things because I'm a big God that's bigger than any problem that you and I can face. So he cares about our soul. That's how much God loves us. Listen to me. If he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross in our place, I'm going to let you know that he will do all he can and he has to break you. God will break you in places that are good for you. And this is what occurred here with Joseph. You see, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, he says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, and I'm going to agree that we are all in Christ this morning. Yes, sir. And if you're not in Christ, please, at the end of the service, Let's give our life over to the Lord. The Bible says the new has come. The old has gone and the new has come. That means the old nature. That means everything that we used to be about. That means he's telling you get rid of any guilt. Get rid of any shame. Get rid of anything that reflects your past because the new has come. I've changed your name from Jacob to Israel. You're a child of God. There's no condemnation in God. You're the child of the Most High King, a friend of God. You sit with the Lord in your heart because the kingdom of God is within us. Can somebody say amen to that? So when we look at this, you know, Jacob and Israel, they're, they're, they were, a, well, Jacob and Esau, they were an epitome of, of civilly revivalry. How many had civilly revivalry growing up, yeah. you know, as kids, especially back in the day? I mean, uh, like seven was like a normal number back in the day, you know. Mom and Dad, I don't know, they used to make jokes about not having no TV. Okay. But families were five and more, it's not today, like, you know, two, that's it. We had big families, and there's a lot of civilly, civilly revivalry that would take place. And I need you remember as a child that maybe you always had to fight for your parents' attention. Yeah. I think you can remember as a child that even here are these two boys right here, these two young men, that, you know, one of them, uh, Esau, the Bible depicts him and declares him as a, as a warrior. He was a, a, a hunter, and, you know, he was, you know, built and... You know, the Bible says he had uh, red hair and he was very hairy and he was what the Bible says basically a man's man. But Jacob, on the other hand, the Bible says that you know he had smooth skin. Okay. You know, they more or less they, they kind of point to the fact that he was like a mama's boy. He didn't know how to hunt. He had you know he didn't really work a lot like his brother. And so the father Isaac at this time. He more or less favored Esau because how many of dads, we, we want our children, our boys, you know, to, to be manly. We want them to, you know, to work and we want them to, you know, grow strong yes. and, you know, to do the things that the, the boys do. And so Isaac kind of favored him a little bit more to where Rebecca favored Jacob, you know, he always had him with him. And, and so one day, Isaac, the Bible says, his eyes were getting to him, so he called Esau to him and says, look, I'm, my time is getting short and it's time for me to bless you now. So go into the field and, and go capture some game and make me my favorite kid. So I am going to bless you with the inheritance that my father Abraham had given me. Okay. Rebecca had overheard this and she runs over there to Jacob and they both conspired together to get the inheritance from Isaac that belonged to Saul. Rebecca says, listen to me, you go and get me two goats, and I'm going to cook them, and I'm going to prepare your father's meal. Jacob was kind of worried about, well, Esau's hairy, don't worry about it, just do what I say, because he ends up getting the skins of the goat and ties them to his hands and his neck. He walks into Isaac's tent, wow. and Isaac basically overall blesses him. He says, you know, you've you got the man's man, um, the, the hair on your hands, you, you, you smell like, like Esau, but you kind of sound like Jacob. But he still ends up blessing him. Jacob comes and returns from the field and finds out about this. I mean, he is Esau. He finds out about this, and in his 
afraid. He says, when my father, he, he's going to die soon. When he died, I vowed that I am going to kill Jacob. The news of this goes to Rebecca. Rebecca tells Jacob, listen, your brother is hot. He's angry. I want you to go to uh, Haran, to my brother's house, Stephen, and I want you just to stay there a little while. Come back when he's cooled down. Because how many of you have ever been angry before? You know, you're angry with your brother. You're angry with your sister. And sometimes it just takes you a little while to cool down. But the Bible says that Jacob left and he did not come back until over 20 years later. He did not come back until he was ready to allow the Spirit of God to confront his inner issues. Wow. So this is the thing that had occurred right here. And how many can agree with me that serving the Lord for a while, you got to tell your neighbor that God's in an interrupting business. When it comes to serving the Lord for a while, God is in a life-changing business. He will not allow us to stay the same. He's the God of now. Can you imagine if we came and we served the Lord and we just stayed exactly the way we were 20 years ago? Uh, God loves us so much that he will not allow those things to take place. And sometimes he has to push us and shove us and challenge us and propel us into a new dimension, a new level, a spiritual walk. And guess what? Sometimes he will even break religious rules to get to you. Religious rules are like when he healed the man who had been lame for 38 years. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, all they could think about was that he broke a rule. You're working on the Sabbath, which is Sunday. You're working on Sunday. How dare you? It's the fourth commandment of, of, of the Ten Commandments to keep the Sabbath holy. You know, but they didn't understand. You see, instead of worshiping him for the man who had received his miracle, all they could think about is what Jesus was doing wrong. All they can think about is like, oh, well, he didn't say it the correct way, or he didn't follow the law. But Jesus came to break the law because religion kills more people than we ever know. Wow. But when people are set on religion, they forget about the relationship part. They forgot that although Jesus, which he tells them, he says, no, no, listen, he says, my father. He doesn't say our father. He's declaring to them that I am the son of the living God, my father. Is always that word. And I am always working as well. They didn't know that they were in the presence of not only the Sabbath, but the Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus Christ. He, he will break all rules just to get to you. He didn't care if you were a Samaritan woman. He didn't care if you were an adulterous woman. He didn't care if you were a, a person that walked away from the calling. No, all he cared about is that you came back to the fold, that you gave your life back to him, that you allowed his mercy and grace to engulf you because he loves you and he will do all things. He will leave the 99 just to go after you. That's how special you are. Tell your neighbor, I'm not that special. I'm not special. And a lot of times we think we're not special. A lot of times we think because we messed up that day that we don't deserve the favor of God. I want the favor of God rest upon you whether you're good or whether you're bad. That's the love of the, the unconditional love of our God. Tell your neighbor. Because sometimes the enemy wants to lie to us and bring condemnation. Uh-uh. Tell your neighbor, no, not so with my God. He loves me more than a brother. So they were focused and on rules and be blinded to all the miracles that Jesus did. So God, he did not rescue us from a life of misery and pain. He did not deliver us from bondage for you and I to stay the same. How I mean, you know when there's a transformation, when the Holy Spirit invades our lives, there's going to be an outward manifestation yes, of God's presence within our lives. This is why when we come, we, we can't hold back from worshiping. We can't hold back from declaring to the nation. This is what God has done in my life.
It's a time to get right. Come on, it's a time to get clear. Come on, For him of who he is within all of our lives. Can somebody say amen? amen. See, God did not give us talents and gifts and an anointing to be stagnant or idle or for us to take that and go bury it. Okay. See, Exodus 16 says, When God provided the manna from heaven, he instructed Moses, Tell the people to let my manna from heaven. But this is it. It's only to feed you for this day. Okay. And this day only. Don't try to hold it. Don't try to hide it. Because there are some, you know, we don't follow directions too well. On, we know that we as a people, we want to stab some things. We know what's stab in here. I'm going to stab this for tomorrow. <laughs> They try to snatch it. The Bible says the next day when they woke up that that manna from heaven, it had all kinds of maggots on it and it had a bad odor. I want to let you know that that reflects that you and I, when we hear what thus says the Lord, has to say to you and I in our heart that we're to use it for that day. We're to apply it to our lives that day. We're not to go bury it because I want to let you know that living water, when it becomes stagnant, it begins to have bacteria, it begins to have an odor, and it will begin to smell. We're not a bunch of smelly Christians, but we're a Christian that walk, talk, breathe, live the living manifestation of God Himself. We are imitators of the Lord. We mimic all that He does. That's the God we serve. And I'm not saying that we got to be out there doing all these things like all hyperactive and stuff. No, we display it in our action. We display it in our joy. We display it when, when, when my wife can now get up here and testify that this rich man that he was had came from his sinful way. And when she's saying is correct, I mean, I have changed my sinful way. And I can declare to the Lord, thank you, Jesus, for that. It's a lot of hard work. Jesus said in John 6, 51, I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. See, God has a destiny for each and every one of us to fulfill that he's called us to. This is why we don't we don't plan uh, our walk in the Lord. This is why we don't uh, uh, plan our destiny. This is why we discover our destiny. This is why the need of the Holy Spirit that we allow Him, because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is our guide. See, we don't need a guide into our path. We know how to get to over there to Madison Street. We know how to get to that house that sells the methamphetamine. We know how to get to that prison that where we were always combined. We know how to get to that hell hole that we got delivered from. You don't have to show me or tell me or give me a guide to take me there. But we need a guide into our future because God wants to take us to places that you and I have never experienced before in our walk in Christ. And the only way that he can do that is sometimes he needs to break some things within our lives in order to get us to the place that he's called us. See, we like hearing messages about God's grace, and rightly so. We should hear about the God that forgives. We should hear about the God that healeth thee. We should hear about the God who provides. We should hear about the God who's the lily in the valley. We should hear about the God that makes me lie down in green pastures. We should hear all those things. But a lot of times we serve a God that sometimes he's a mystery. A lot of times you look and say, well, whoa, whoa, stop, stop your road right here. Slow down, turtle. There's a, there's a little bit of heat coming my way. See, we serve a God that will also get into our lives and begin to break some things which is very painful. Something that will hurt us. Something that will, you know, just cause us to buckle down and bite down and, and make us question, like, why am I going through all these things that I'm going through? And it might not be the enemy that's causing those things because I want to inform you just in case you don't know. Like Biggie Small said, in case you don't know, now you know. God will interrupt your life and he will bring trial. He will send you in a storm that you didn't even think that you can endure. He will place you in those places just to get you alone. He will cause you to send over all of your possessions, all of your material things. And when he has you right there, this is why sometimes we have to go to jail. This is why 
sometimes we have to go to the men's home. This is why sometimes that if God will cause us to lose some sleep at night, He's a God that will give you rest, and He will be a God that will disturb your peace until you get it all together. That's the God that we serve as well. So we got to understand that. So the Bible says in verse 24, Then Jacob was alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the hip, the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint. He wrestled with him. So in number one, God will break something in order to get you to submit and surrender. In James 1.14, the Bible says, But each person is tempted when he is lured or enticed by his own desires. How many got some desires here? We all got the time. We all get tempted. We all do things that we shouldn't do. This is why Paul says, the things that I don't want to do, I do. And the things that I hate, I end up doing. Or the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing them. And the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing them. He says, who will deliver me from this body of death? He calls himself a wretched man. This tells us that there's always the, the battle, the, the inner struggle that you and I have that, that comes from being learned or enticed by our own desires. And we have a lot of desires that we chase. And then it says, when desire, when it is confirmed, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Now, Jacob's problem is that he was always seeking after material things. He wanted Isaac's uh, he wanted uh, well, Isaac to give him Esau's birthright. He wanted Rebecca's hand in marriage. He wanted all the inheritance to himself. See, the Bible calls him, his name is, is Jacob because of, it means supplanter. In other words, to take over. In other words, it, it's like by conniving or dying or deceiving. He was basically a con man. This is where he got his name. And, and so... What this speaks is the part where Esau comes in one day from the field and he's famished, he's hungry, and he's exhausted. And Jacob denies him, and, and the content that he is tells him, Sell me your birthright and I'll give you some of this red stew right here. Esau, the Bible says he despised that birthright anyway, ended up trading him a bowl of soup for his birthright. How I many you know that we can't make uh, a long-term decision on a short-term one. And these are our desires right here. A lot of times we, we make those decisions that are hurt us in the long run. We make decisions that have consequences. We make decisions that take us and lead us to the things of death. This is why we struggle a lot. This is why we're in the bridge of sometimes, maybe uh, at the bridge of divorce, or we're losing our families, or we're losing our kids because of the decisions that we make on a want and a need that we think that we have to do right there and then. Wow. So this is this right here. Now for some of us, God might be trying to get our attention at this point. We call that a holy frustration. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us, we, 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 our, our peace is maybe disturbed. Yeah. Some of us, you know, things are, are we we're might be headed in the wrong direction. And see, the thing about God is He will always realign us to His direction. You see, sometimes we, we like Jacob, will chase after material things. Sometimes we'll, we'll go after that job. Sometimes we'll go after prestige. Sometimes we'll, we'll go after things that, that, that will cause us to maybe uh, lose our families and the marriage suffers and our children. We're losing them because we're working long hours thinking that, you know, we got to make money. The material things of the world. This whole thing just fixes this right here. But I want to let you know that now is the time not to be closed-minded or to, to shut uh, the Holy Spirit when He wants to deal with our hearts this morning. See, the Bible says that Samson didn't realize that the Spirit of the Lord left him. The Spirit of the Lord left Saul and he didn't realize it. David in Psalm 51 cries out, Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Right. Jacob in chapter 28, 16, he says, Surely God is in this place, yes. and I didn't even know it. This is when he had a dream about Jacob's ladder, the angels were descending to and fro, and he 
come to the realization that God was in this place. Right? And he didn't even know it. We can come to a place that where the Spirit of the living God is moving. And we can come to a place that where we, the people of God, that we don't even know it. And so he says in verse 26, let me go for daybreak. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and man and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is it that you ask me my name? And the Bible says that he blessed them there. So the question that we might be asking ourselves is, what kind of fight can God, the God that we know, that theology tells us and declares, the God who can move mountains, the God that can quiet a storm, the God that can cause the, the blind to see and the lame to walk, what kind of a fight can God be in that he does not prevail? A fight that he does not win. He basically lost this fight right here. The Bible says that he was kind of, let me go. He realized that he could not prevail against Jacob. Well, the fight, the only fight, that God himself cannot prevail, that God himself, the one that's omnipotent, all-powerful, all-knowledgeable, that he cannot win, is the battle of our free will. That's the only fight. Because of free will, we can, we can decide whether we're going to follow God, we can reject the Holy Spirit, we can walk away from the presence of the Lord, we can struggle all we want, and God can tug at our heart all He wants, and the Holy Spirit can try to convict us, but if we're shut down and we're closed-minded, God Himself will not win that fight. So here He is, He's wrestling with Jacob. He's wrestling with him right there because He knows that, look, if you don't get this right, your actions are going to cause you to lose your life, not only in this life, but in the life to come. Now, I want to let you know that some of us this morning, we might be in a wrestle. And I'm going to be closing for the truth. We might be in a wrestle with God Almighty. And I want to let you know that there needs to be a time where God has to come and do some breaking. God, the God that we serve, he touched Jacob's pit. Jacob did not realize that that was God until God himself just touched him and broke his head. The Bible says he had to break it. A lot of times we won't come to the reckoning of who God is until God interrupts our life and he breaks us. I had an experience one time. I mean, I was still shucking and jiving and conniving and in my old ways and God himself had to come in and interrupt my miserable life and do that breaking in order for me to understand that God has called me to another type of lifestyle, another dimension in my spiritual walk that no longer can I be called Jacob, but now I'm going to be called Israel. But I want to let you know that just because his name was changed from Israel to Jacob, that there are significant parts in the Bible that declare to us that even though his name was changed, the changing of his name is unique. There are other parts in the Bible that were other people. God had changed their names. There's Abraham. God had changed it to Abraham. There's Sarah. God had changed to Sarah. There's Paul that I was Saul that God had changed to Paul. There's Simon that God had changed to Peter. I want to let you know that from that day on, when God had changed their names, they were no longer called by their former name. Nowhere in the Bible did, are they addressed with their former name. But Jacob, even though his name was changed to Israel, there are parts in the Bible that were people where he was still mentioned as Jacob. Even after God had changed his name. And that shows us right there the grace and the mercy of God. Because even though God had changed his name, I want to let us know that each and every one of us, that our name could be Israel this morning. God had changed it already. But that you and I still have Jacob tendency. Wow. You and I still have Jacob wow. character. And but I want to inform you that the God we serve, the loving God who's all merciful, that even though we fall short, that even though we struggle at 
sometimes. And even though sometimes our character flaws get the best of us, the mercy of God is still with us when we're heathen. Crying out to the Lord. He's heard your cry. 
You might have been telling yourself, I got our kids together. 